What's up, Spilled Milkers? How's everyone doing? The reason I am in a shirt like this and wearing my extra fancy glasses and while I'm seemingly coming to you from a small trailer somewhere is that I am actually uh, on the set of the season of Tournament of Champions that you haven't seen yet. Uh, doing a little, uh, oh, I'm working, I guess is what we like to call it. Um, so right out that door is the whole world of Tournament of Champions. Uh, so it's a lot of fun to be up here in Northern California and uh, spending uh, a couple of days. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people uh, love that show. So if you have questions about it, the ones that I can answer, don't ask me questions I can't answer, uh, feel free to drop them into the chat for next time. Uh, we have so many uh, great questions this week. I want to get right to them. Um, okay, where are we? Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. This is very typical. I'm now waiting for my computer to load because I have... There we go. Tori asks... What dishes do you order at a Sichuan restaurant if you're trying a new place and want to figure out if it's good? We're two people, so we're limited in how much we can order. Well, uh, I went to the School of Orson Welles uh, for all of my Chinese food ordering. If I'm with two people, I order for six. If I'm with four people, I order for eight. If I'm with six people, I order for 12. And I take everything home with me that we don't eat. Um, so I'm probably the wrong demo. Uh, on that, but there are there are classics uh, in the canon by which I use like a canary in a coal mine or my litmus test, right? And the biggest one is mapo tofu. Uh, you know, twice cooked pork, if they actually do it with leeks as it should be done, is another one. Um, there are so many, you know, Sichuan classics in the canon. I really only need those. Well, I also order usually uh, uh, spicy uh, fish, uh, fillets or whole, doesn't matter which, uh, with pickled vegetables, um, Kung Pao chicken. Um, and the reason those four uh, I'm putting in there is uh, just sort of going one by one. Um, Mapo tofu, I get a sense of how they cook, what their chili oil is like, their seasoning, if they put Sichuan peppercorns into the mix and all that other kind of stuff. Um, with the Kung Pao chicken, uh, there is a very specific list of di you know items that go in there. There's a, the chicken should be slippery. Um, it needs to be twice cooked. And there's a whole retinue of uh, analysis that goes on uh, when I order that dish. Twice cooked pork should be from the belly. It shouldn't be dry. Um, it should be paper thin. It should be made with leeks. Um, it shouldn't have a pound of jalapenos in it. I've had delicious versions with the jalapeno, but it, it tells me something about the place, depending on what chilies they use and stuff like that. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, I'm blanking on it. Um, you, you know, I'll usually order a hot pot, something like that, right? Um, I mean, look, if I'm at a real Sichuan restaurant, I knew it right away when I walk in, you know, uh, a, a really good dry fried uh, chicken dish, a rabbit in chili oil, uh, you know, boneless or bone in uh, hack chicken with a sesame uh, chili sauce. Uh, Dan Dan noodles are a big one uh, for me. So, I mean, yeah. And because I'm obsessive about Chinese food, um, I'm, I'm pretty persnickety about them. Chuck writes, Chef, you speak with such a vast knowledge, all, all at the ready. That's very kind of you, thank you. All of that while putting the time and effort on producing your shows, doing events, in addition to the service work you talk about, thank you. Um, how are you able to absorb, comprehend, and retain such a large volume of information when we're inundated with so much all the time? Oh, because I ignore absolutely everything else and just focus on that, and I'm kind of not exaggerating. Um, do you have any advice for us mere mortals? 
yeah, don't do what I'm doing unless you want to do what I do for a living. Um, I, I will say it's very strange. Um, I will, I will have strange mental blank spots about the craziest shit in my life, like a book that I just read two months ago, and I'm talking to you about it with someone who says, oh, I just read that book, and they're talking about pieces of the book, and I'm like, what are they talking about? Because I read at night and I fall asleep, and I read at night and then I fall asleep, and I read at night and then I fall asleep, so it's like, it, it's nuts. Same thing with podcasts I listen to. But I can remember what you and I had for dinner 27 years ago and what you liked about the restaurant and didn't like about it and the argument that we got into about the quality of the apple pie. I, it's just, it's what my brain has just chosen to focus on since I was a little kid. Um, so I hate to say I, I don't know why or how, but I think that's why the die was cast into what I would do uh, before I even started doing what I do now. Uh, Kira writes, what is a savory dish I can make with apples? Oh my gosh, what a great question. Um, well, obviously you can make savory apple sauces and serve them with anything porcine. I mean, I, I don't want to make the pork chops with applesauce joke, uh, but, you know, browned and, and braised pork uh, with apples is fantastic. I have a recipe on my website with uh, baby chicken poussin, or you can do it with um, Cornish hens. Uh, with apples that are diced and the the sauce is made up of apple cider, apple cider vinegar, apple jack or apple brandy, whichever one you happen to have uh, on hand. Um, did I say apple vinegar? And uh, and then it's finished with cream. It's a classic, uh, you know, poulet a la Normande, um, chicken in the style of Normandy, which is their apple groin region and apple brandy region and apple vinegar region. Um, and it's just delicious. I make it with pheasant as well. I mean, I have that recipe several different places on my website with different proteins. Uh, the other thing, I'm a huge blood sausage guy. Don't don't turn off the, uh, don't turn away. Hear me out. Um, and I saute apples and onions in brown butter, uh, hard sear, so we, the, the apples are still a little crisp uh, in slices as a side with that. Um, and it works so perfectly. And I do it with all kinds of, when I'm cooking uh, bratwurst or vice versa or, or, you know, knockwurst, any other sort of sausagey meal I'm putting together, I serve it with caramelized onions that have had apples cooked in brown butter, just flashed it mixed together. Um, and I do it, I serve uh, savory apples with chacrut that I make, which is a big sauerkraut meal with uh, garlic and pork sausage and smoked pork chops and other porcine uh, smoky cured things in there. Um, it's a great dish and I love serving uh, savory apple. I season it with rosemary and thyme. Um, I love doing savory applications with apples because not all of them are super sweet. Use Harrelson's and Cortland's and other varietals that are great for pies that don't break down right away. Um, they're usually a little more tart as well. Aziz writes, I'm glad to have the opportunity to correspond with you and ask you a question. I really like your sauce recipes. Beaten red wine mignonette, cocktail sauce, aiolis, etc. Thank you, Aziz. I have a question. Can I make these sauces and preserve them? Uh, not really. Um, and keep the finished product always on hand? Not really. Um, here's the deal. Aiolis and mayonnaises go bad, but the seasonings in them fall flat after a while. Um, cocktail sauce, same thing. Anything that's acidic, uh, like the, the mignonette, etc., um, begins to get flat after a while. So, you know, sadly, those are things that I think taste better the, the fresher they are, whereas like beef and barley soup tastes better if you make it, put it in the fridge for two days, and then eat it, right? Uh, Keith writes, I'm trying to become a more adventurous eater. Do you have any tips or tricks for convincing myself to try something I don't think I'll enjoy? Well, Keith, how many more meals do you have left on Earth? I mean, if it's not that many, you know, I actually did the calculus the other day. I forget what the number was, but I, I actually had a panic attack that, you know, you know, if I have 25 more years uh, of good eating left on this planet before I'm, you know, in my late 80s or something and I'm to have to eat something pureed or 
Yikes. Um, how many more meals do I have? Like, I don't want to, I never was one who, to waste meals. So, uh, you know, if you don't have, don't, don't, you know, if you're 20, push the envelope. Try things. Always, when you're out at restaurants, always order at least one dish that you don't think you would necessarily love and try it. That's how we, and if you want to do it as a cheaper experiment, make it at home. I'm always telling people who are home cooks, every week make two or three things that you've never made before. And maybe that's a good way to sort of incorporate the idea about being a little more open to trying foods you don't think you'd like. Um, Robin writes, what's your favorite food moment from a TV show or movie? Wow, that's a great question. Uh, so many from movies. And I'm going to, I'm just going to ignore all the food movies from Tampopo to Babette's Feast, from Eat, Drink, Man, Woman, one of my favorites, uh, to uh, The Cook, The Thief, Her Wife and His Lover. Um, I mean, so many great food movies. Uh you know, and I'm going to ignore the bear and all the other like food centric TV shows. And I'm going to pick a movie uh, that you probably don't think I'm going to. There is a movie called L.A. Stories with Steve Martin, where he is desperate. Steve Martin is invested, by the way, in a lot of restaurants over the course of his life, loves food, and he puts a lot of food moments into his movies. Like, so there's that great ordering scene in The Jerk where he's screaming at the waiter, get these snails off my plate and bring me bring me some of that new wine you talked me out of earlier. I mean, it's one of the great lines in any movie. In, the, in, in L.A. Stories, he has to apply at his bank to get a reservation at a restaurant called Lidio. And for the first half of the movie, all you hear about is Lidio, Lidio. And he, he goes to the bank and the... the manager of the restaurant is at his bank they have to verify he can afford to eat there and they slide a, a pretend menu across to him and the, the the manager of the restaurant sneers down at him and says if you were going to get a reservation what would you order and he he looks at it, he goes oh the sea bass the manager said you cannot have the sea bass and steve martin looks and goes what can i have he says you can have the chicken with such disdain it's a very funny moment but even better and it's just a sight gag when he finally does get the reservation at Lydio and he goes to the restaurant he drives past the sign as he's taking his car to get it valeted and Lydio is L apostrophe I D I O T French for the the idiot um love Steve Martin love Steve Martin food moments um Peggy writes, oh, that's a destination. Where are you going to get to your uh, restaurant requests for other cities in a moment? Um, a couple of quick things. Um, a lot of people have come out with their uh, best cookbook for fall um, recommendations, and uh, I'm no different. Um, and I, I happen to love uh, cookbooks. Um, I I'm absolutely, absolutely nuts about them. Um, and there are so many good ones that come out in the fall and then in the spring is another great time for them. Um, so I just thought I'd let you know some of the ones that I absolutely love. Um, my friend Paula Velez um, has a new book out called, uh, it's coming out called Bodega Bakes, which I would encourage you to get. Uh, Carolina Galen, G-E-L-E-N, has a book called Pass the Plate. I love her stuff. I subscribe to her on Substack. Uh, I think she's absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Um, there is a book by Melissa Martin called Bayou that I am just can't wait to get my hands on. I like her books, uh, and I'm looking forward uh, to checking it out. Uh, Martha Stewart has her 100th cookbook that is coming out this fall. And like all things Martha, um, it's a brilliant concept book because if you have a hundred cookbooks, guess how many recipes are in this one? A hundred! And it's her like hundred great recipes. I just think it's absolutely, absolutely uh, wonderful. Um, my friend Zoe Francois has a book called Zoe Bakes Cookies. Um, you know, I love everything that uh, Zoe does, so I love that. Um, Layla Heller, H-E-L-L-E-R 
and, and I love Persian food, has a book called Persian Feasts. And, you know, the great thing about this food is just big, complex flavors, and in feasts, everything is very textural and colorful, and it's the type of food that I really like to make at home because it's, there's a lot of hobbyist elements uh, to it. Um, the, uh, what else did I think was really, really, really fun? Oh, I, I'm endlessly obsessed, as a, you know, with Chinese food, and Christina Cho has a book called Chinese Enough. Um, and the, the idea here is, I mean, it's, it's very approachable for anyone who's new to cooking Chinese uh, food, um, but um, it is, it's all about the traditional foods of China mingled um, with her own upbringing in the Midwest um, and her current home in uh, the San Francisco area. Um, so she's not afraid to mix and mingle different um, elements of other cultures into her Chinese uh, cooking. Um, and it's, anyway, I just like, she had a, a, a book, this is, I think this is her second, third cookbook, and I think she wrote a book, I wanna say it was called Mooncakes, um, that I thought was really good too. Um, so yeah, uh, absolutely uh, can't wait to get my hands on that one. I love every single one of Yotam Adelenghi's books, so why wouldn't I like his new one that's coming out that's called Comfort. Um, obviously it's his comfort food, so that's great. Um, Julia Tertian, T-U-R-S-H-E-N, yes, that Julia Tertian has a cookbook called What Goes With What. I love subheads. A hundred recipes, 20 charts, endless possibilities, need I say more. That is a fun cookbook, right? Um, what else did I want to, oh, there's a restaurant in New York that I'm really fond of called Madame Vo, V-O, and, uh, the uh, Yen Vo uh, and Jimmy Lee have uh, created the Madame Vo cookbook. It's Vietnamese home cooking. Check it out. Um, I can't wait to get that. Um, anyway, that is, uh, that is my list for fall. If you have a cookbook that you are looking for, and by the way, we'll have links to all those, uh, where you can buy all those books and a cover shot, so you can take a look at all of those. Um, congratulations to the Food and Wine uh, 10 Best New Chefs. Um, as always, I am uh, thrilled to see so many great culinarians uh, on there. Um, we're gonna put a link down below uh, to uh, all of those uh, chefs. Uh, but uh, Lawrence Smith from Chilte, uh, Kamari Mick and Mary Adia from the Musket Room and Rafts, Karen Tomlinson, uh, a friend of mine who I, I just am so happy for, uh, has cooked at a bunch of restaurants in the Twin Cities. She has her own restaurant called Muriel in St. Paul. Um, she calls her food sort of Scandinavian influenced nostalgia eating. She's just an incredible uh, chef. I love her food. Uh, Lena Horry and Brian Lee from Kisser in Nashville. Erica Council from Bomb Biscuit in Atlanta. Uh, Doe Arpa Porno Parrot from Holy Basil in Los Angeles. Why can't I say his name? It's a diffi difficult one. Let me give it one more shot. Arpa Porno Parrot. Sometimes there are some names that are, don't roll off the tongue as easily as others. Uh, Holy Basil is one of my favorite places to stop in Los Angeles. I was just there oh, a, a short time ago on a one day, I literally out of town, I went and got uh, to-go food from there. Uh, Nicole Mills from Pesh in New Orleans. Uh, Johnny White, Jalen Hurd, and Lane Milne from Goldie's in Fort Worth, Texas, a great barbecue place. Uh, Silver Ayokovotsi from Nen Juniors in Asheville, North Carolina. Congrats to all of you. Now, I got more notes when that came out from people saying, doesn't so-and-so begin to, don't they deserve to be in there? Don't, don't you have people who missed out? Remember, with 
Food and Wine, 10 Best New Chef, there are rules. We have a link to the, the list from food and, food and Wine. If you go online, you will see the rules. You have to have, the restaurant has to have been open a certain amount of time. You have to have been the chef there for a certain amount. I mean, like, you know, it's, it's not um, something that is, uh, you know, any chef at any place can be at. Uh, or can be eligible for. So please, please, please check that. Um, the uh, is there a chef? People, I got asked a question uh, that didn't make it onto our official list on Twitter. I saw a bunch of people saying, "Is there a restaurant that you've eaten at recently where you would love to see the chef get awards from? Any awards?" And I look. There's so many great chefs out there. I'm, I'm, this was just the first name that came to mind. I had a meal by myself in Charleston at a restaurant called Chubby Fish, and I can't wait to get back there. And the chef and owner is, a, is named James London. His wife runs the front of the house. Um, and, uh, you know, Chubby Fish was a uh, Best New Restaurant uh, winner from Bon Appetit. Um, it was ranked the number seven restaurant in America by Food & Wine Magazine at one point. He's been a James Beard finalist for Best Chef that Southeast in 2024. Um, and uh, the restaurant is six years old, so I'm not sure if, if, if I'm not sure what the year requirement is on chefs being chef in a restaurant or whatever. Uh, but, you know, there's someone who I just think is rushing it. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, uh, all right. On to uh, the places that you have wanted to ask about. Um, Michael writes, hey, love the show. Wondering what your recommendations for food are in D.C. I assume you mean Washington, D.C. Visiting soon, looking to try something new. In the past, we've tried enjoying the local French places, the Diplomat and the smaller La Chaumière, been to both, love them, or the Ethiopian spots, since there aren't great options like that in our hometown. The Ethiopian food in, in DC is absolutely fantastic. Um, and yeah, I've got some uh, recommendations uh, for you. Um, and again, there's there are great restaurants um, in uh, Washington, D.C., and I'll give you a great example. 250 Barbecue is a great place, but I don't go to D.C. to eat barbecue, right? I go to other parts of the world to eat barbecue. So I don't necessarily make a beeline there. Um, Albi, which is a Middle Eastern and Mediterranean uh, spot, I'm absolutely nuts about. Michael Rafiti's uh, place. Um, I, I mentioned Ethiopian food before. There's a lot of African food uh, in that uh, city, um, and Almeida is is just fantastic. It's sort of like a, a, a pan African kind of place. A lot of influences from a lot of different places, and um, they're not afraid to cook with local ingredients uh, either. They're not so bound to tradition uh, there. So much good uh, cuisines of from so many places in D.C. It's a real melting pot food city. Uh, ban Siam is a great Thai restaurant, B-A-A-N. Um, the, uh, oh, Bostan, B-O-S-T-A-N, which is Ouija cuisine. I've, I've had a chance to actually eat that food in the part of the world that the Ouijas are from. They're a nomadic peoples from Central Asia. And, um, I mean, it is just absolutely absolutely knockout good. Um, and I encourage everyone to go there. One of my most memorable uh, meals there in a long time. Bresca is great for finer dining. Um, let's see. Uh, obviously, any Jose Andres restaurant, I got to plug my friend. I keep going to Haleo all the time because that squid with black rice dish is as good as any dish being cooked in that city in perpetuity. Um, if you're looking for mid-Atlantic classic seafood, go to Crisfield, C-R-I-S-F-I-E-L-D. Uh, it's in Silver Spring. Uh, I'm assuming it's named after Crisfield, Maryland. Um, new American food, uh, you know, think 
their take on fried chicken, go to uh, Ellie Bird, E-L-L-I-E, -E, separate word bird, uh, which is fantastic. Um, Filipino food, uh, Kuya Ja, uh, K-U-Y-A-J-A, -A, uh, they in Rockville. I mean, you know, it does roasted pork, uh, mostly belly, you know, Cebu style. Um, it's just unbelievable. You, you really should uh, go there. Um, Maketo, still great. Pan Asian. I, I've been going there for, I don't know, 10 years, maybe more. Um, superb. Um, I love Afghani food um, and Lapis, L A P I S. Awesome. Uh, Mama Chang for Chinese. Awesome. Uh, Peter Chang, his wife and daughter, they, they have a little empire in that part of the world. Um, Oyster Oyster. Uh, which is fantastic, um, and I'm not going to ruin it for you. It's hard to get in. Uh, Rob Rubba won the uh, the Big Beard Award last year. Was was he chef chef of the year? Um, looking down my list, yeah. Uh, oh, Rasika, great Indian cuisine. Um, they have two locations. I go to the OG one in Penn Quarter. Um, I mean, Rasika is just incredible. Uh, God, I love eating there. Um, I'm sure I'm blanking. Oh, the Dabney. D-A-B-N-E-Y. Um, so check that out. All of those are great restaurants in D.C. Um, and uh, Peggy writes, I'm in San Antonio for a conference. Ooh, this might be too late. Uh, any restaurant recommendations? Yeah, I mean, you know, fantastic restaurants uh, in San Antonio, the city that arguably birthed uh, Tex-Mex food. Um, Clementine is dynamite. I love it. Um, it's a seasonal prefix uh, situation, really rootsy uh, cooking from that part of the world. Um, Taquitos West Avenue, uh, super casual, um, just great tacos. Just awesome, awesome tacos. Uh, the, um, I get donuts at the original donut shop. Yeah. You know, don't, don't hate on me. Um, let's see what else. Uh, oh, Las Nieves fruit cups and more. Uh, Las Nieves, uh, it's a little snack stand in Beacon Hill. Um, I mean, you want to get, you know, frozen mangonadas doused in chamoy, which is what I get, um, go there. They have locations, several locations in the city. Um, they all have outdoor dining options. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Lots of different fruit and frozen things. So they started cooking. They'd start, they have savory bites as well. Go there, get it. I mean, I'm nuts about it. Um, Curry Boys Barbecue. Yes, as the name impl uh, implies, barbecue with some Southeast Asian influence, superb. Go get it. That is a very unique place. Um, one of my favorite places to dine in San Antonio is called Southerly's. S-O-U-T-H-E-R-L-E-I-G-H. -H. Uh, I Fried fish collars. I'm just going to leave it there with you. Um, Best Quality Daughter, which is a, a wonderful restaurant. Um, spotlighting, um, well, it's it's woman-owned and operated cooking pers very deeply personal uh, Asian food. Uh, and I couldn't recommend it highly enough. I had a glorious meal the last time I was there. Um, if you want, uh, you know, sort of tex mex slash Mexican old school food, go to Ray's Drive-In, I-N-N, -N, see what I did there. Um, super, super clever, and that will uh, help you out in San Antonio. Um, I guess, what was another thing that I wanted to mention? Um, Oh, well, you know what? I'm going to save that for next time. I have a couple restaurant recommendations for places that are my personal choices for best new restaurants of the year. 
uh, we're going to do that uh, coming up in just uh, well a short amount of time. I, I miss some, you know. We're going to drop this. You're going to see it at the end of the week. At the beginning of next week, I'm going to do another one um, because I missed a episode of uh, what we're now calling "Go Fork Yourself." It used to be called "Ask Me Anything." Um, tip your servers. Have a great rest of your week.